You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Tim Webb. I'm here with David Klingler and for our podcast, Teach Me the Bible podcast. And so we've, uh, Jesus has given us a rather lengthy uh, discussion on the end of the age, what it's going to be like. Uh, He finishes these words and then he moves right into talking about the crucifixion. Is it are we there? Are we? We're, yeah, we're 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 right there. So this okay. is where this whole thing's been headed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, where Paul's going to say, I, "I pass on to you that which I received that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures." This is where we're mm-hmm. this is where we're headed, mm-hmm. and and uh, and so uh, th- let's pick it up in verse mm-hmm. chapter twenty six, verse one. It came about that when Jesus had finished these words, he said to his disciples, "You know, he has just mm-hmm. finished teaching about the end of the age of and of his coming." Um, of course, you gotta um, ask yourself what, what you know. What will be uh, tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the, the age? So, if he's coming, he had to have gone away, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> sure. Just, you know, yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so Jesus is still teaching about his going away and then his You'd, his yeah. return. Um, and so it came about that when Jesus had finished these words, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming. The Son of Man is to be delivered up for crucifixion. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people were gathered together in the high court, uh, or in the, the, court, the court of the, of the high, priest. high priest named Caiaphas. And they plotted together to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they were saying, not during the festival, lest a riot occur among the people. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with alabaster vial full of costly perfume and Mm -hmm. poured it uh, on his head And uh, as he reclined. And his disciples were indignant, saying, why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for the high price and given to the poor. But Jesus answered, uh, aware of this, said to them, he answers them and says, why do you bother this woman? She's, she's done a good deed. For the poor you will have with you always, but you will not always have me with you. For when she poured this perfume upon my body, she did so to prepare for burial. Uh, truly I say to you, whenever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done shall be spoken of in her memory. Um, what's going on here? Well, um, the um, you know the 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 whole focus of the Old Testament, the whole focus of the Bible, is the coming of of this one who's going to come and fix the uh, fix the mess, fix mm-hmm, the problem, mm-hmm. right? Uh, in the kingdom, you remember back in chapter uh, chapter six, um, the um, this is in chapter six. Uh, no one can serve two masters. Mm-hmm. Um, Look at the birds of the air. Don't be anxious about what you shall eat or or drink or put on your body. Is not life more than food or body more than clothing? And he goes and explains how these are what the this is what the disciples worry about. They worry about food and clothing and all that. And uh, but in the kingdom, see, seek ye first mm-hmm. his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what she's valuing is the king and the kingdom. And what they're saying is, hey, oh, we could have sold that and given it to poor people, you know, so that they would have food to eat and you know, something to drink and clothing. He just mm-hmm. said, yeah. no, you need the kingdom and the king. You don't need this stuff. So mm-hmm. this also goes back to Deuteronomy chapter 15. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15 is this instruction for how to care for the poor among your midst, and mm-hmm. Jesus is going to say, you're always going to have poor. Among, until the king comes, until the kingdom comes, the poor will always be with yeah. you, right? Um, and so uh, she has valued the right thing, yeah. and she's commended for it. Uh, verse 14, then one of the 12, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to, uh, to give me to deliver him up to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver. 
And from then on, he began looking for an opportunity to betray him. And now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, uh, where do you want us to uh, to prepare for you to eat this, the Passover? And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, "Teacher, the teacher says, my time is at hand. Uh, uh, keep the Passover. I'm about to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And his disciples did as, did as Jesus directed him, uh, and they prepared the Passover. And evening came. And when Jesus was declining, he was reclining there at the table with his disciples, and they were eating. And he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. Uh, and being deeply grieved, each one began to say, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered and said, The one who dips his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man is uh, to go just as it is written of him, but woe to the man uh, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man not to have been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and says, Surely not I, not I, Rabbi, not I. And he said, You have said it yourself. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after blessing it, uh, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and saying, uh, drink all of it, for this is the blood of my covenant, which was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until uh, from now on until uh, the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And so uh, the, the story, so you can feel the story starting mm-hmm, to, mm-hmm. in some ways, the the days are slowing down and we focused in right. on on these last days, mm-hmm. we talked about mm-hmm. that when we were going through the um, the Passion Week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so much of uh, of the the gospel content it covers the last days, uh, but but the the frames, the scenes are coming mm-hmm. much much more quickly. Mm-hmm. Bang, 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 mm-hmm. bang, and it's mm-hmm. all heading right mm-hmm. towards right. Uh, the uh, the crucifixion. Uh, right towards uh, the question. See, in the in the question on the table is: Are the disciples going to stay with Jesus? Or are they going to they're going to bolt, desert him, and yeah. and, uh, and go away. away. Are they going to be scandalized mm-hmm. away. by him? And uh, verse thirty, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, "You all will be scandalized. Fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep uh, will be scattered." This is out of Zechariah mm-hmm. chapter uh, chapter thirteen. 13. Uh, chapters nine through fourteen of Zechariah just goes walks you right through the end times. It's mm-hmm. a, a tremendous passages and uh, begins with the uh, triumphal entry and uh, and mm-hmm. takes you all the way to, to the return of Christ. Uh, but Peter uh, answered and said, "Even though all will fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Many others may be scandalized, because, but not me. I'll not never." Me. <laughs> and he says, "Truly, I say to you on this very night." Before the cock crows, you shall deny me three times. And Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing too. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane. Well, let's stop there for a second. Now, we've, um, we've had a lot here. So, um, you know, just a, just a point here. Um, all of the disciples together, all the disciples said the same thing. We will not deny you. But they all did mm-hmm. <laughs> every, to, every one of them. to a person, uh, every, every one of them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, Jesus has come on behind this. He knows this is going to happen. And, and uh, sometimes I think that, you know, I, I would guess that Peter was shocked um, when he realizes what he's done. Right? He's, I'll never deny you. I'll never. And then he goes and does it. Um, my guess is Peter was shocked by his actions, but the Lord was not, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes I'm shocked by my actions, but the Lord's not shocked by our depravity. Right. I think right. we can be shocked by our depravity, by our rebellion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lord's not. Uh, and it's just another opportunity for us to realize we need mercy. Yeah, right? I don't I don't think anyone uh, sets out to fail. I don't think mm-hmm. anyone sets out to do horrible things. Uh, well, yeah, there is evil and wickedness. But I'm saying, as, as a believer, we we don't wake up today thinking about all the horrible things. We find ourselves uh, moving in a direction yep. where we we look up and 
Yeah. How did I, how did I get here? Yeah. And so, you know, and here, you know, Jesus was not what he expected. Jesus was, and now he'd been saying it the whole time, you yeah. know, who are you? You are the Christ. Mm-hmm. Who people say I am, you're the Christ. And the mm-hmm. son of man is going to be delivered. He's been telling them, he's been preparing mm-hmm. them, but they still don't get it. Right. And even now, Peter's still going to deny him, as are all the rest. Mm-hmm. Peter gets a bad uh, bad rap here, but all the rest are doing the same thing, right? Um, then Jesus came mm-hmm. to them at the place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee um, and uh, began to be grieved and distressed. So he takes his up inner circle with him and mm-hmm. began to be grieved and distressed. And they said to him, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond, a little further, and he mm-hmm. fell on his face and he prayed. says, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not thy will, not my will, but thy will be done. And he came to his disciples and they're sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. This is on the... I will never deny you. Yeah, yeah. I'm on, on the a, heels of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Uh, l- let's not go with the don't deny me. Let's just stick with something real basic and simple. Stay here and pray. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get this right. You you can't stay here. You can't stay awake and pray, but somehow you're not going to deny me that. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> it's yeah, just the, it the irony sense. of yeah. it is is uh, is not funny, but it's it's you know the, the irony is ironic. Right? Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, you cannot keep watch with me for even one hour. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's the problem. You know, Peter's right. spirit's willing. He, yeah. he, but but when it comes right down to it, he's not uh, not able to do it. Um, and he went away a second time and prayed, Father, uh, if uh, this can pass away, um, uh, unless I drink it, if, uh, if this cannot, cannot pass, pass away, away. Mm-hmm. unless I drink it, thy will be done. Mm-hmm. And again came and found him sleeping. Their eyes were heavy. And he left them again and went and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then, his, uh, then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being portrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. And while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came accompanied with a great multitude, with swords, with clubs, and the chief priests and the elders of the people. Uh, John, uh, in chapter uh, 18, uh, uh, says a Roman cohort, you know, mm-hmm. 600, 600 soldiers. soldiers. What do you mean 600 soldiers to, to uh, you know, arrest one unarmed guy? Mm-hmm. Uh, unless he's the king. Messiah, king. Yeah. Creator of the universe, all powerful, yeah. almighty. Then why are you bringing? Either way, why are you bringing six hundred? Yeah, six hundred doesn't work if it's just no. a man, and six hundred certainly doesn't work if it's the Christ. That's right. right. Turns out their logic is really. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, you know. So, so uh, they're kind of stuck in no man's land. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, now he who was betraying him, this is Judas Iscariot, mm-hmm. gave him the sign saying, "Whoever I kiss, he's the one. Sees him." Um, and immediately he went to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, what have you come for? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who was with Jesus reached out and drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For uh, all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father who will at once, uh, you know, send me 12 legions of angels? Then uh, how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? That is, uh, that it must happen this way. And Jesus uh, then said to the multitude, have you come with swords and with clubs to arrest me as a robber? Every day I sit in your temple teaching you did not seize me. But all this take place, it took place in order to uh, fulfill the scriptures of the prophets. And all the disciples left him and fled. And so, uh, you know, Jesus is telling them what's going to happen. He's mm-hmm. reminding them of the Old Testament uh, passages um, the, from the 
striking of the sheep and the or the shepherd and the sheep being scattered. And all mm-hmm. this is all happening according to uh, to the script. I was mm-hmm. talking to one of our other Old Testament or New Testament professors, and may have mentioned this before. And I said I can explain the whole New Testament in two words, and he said, uh, "What Jesus Christ?" I said, "No, told you." Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> it is all happening exactly as According the prophets the have mm-hmm. have uh, have uh, fore, uh, foretold. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, of course, uh, Peter here. This is a uh, you know J- Peter draws the sword and and uh, you know Peter gets a lot of um, bad press for he's you know I think Peter's on the right track here. I think he's got the right response. Uh, his timing is all off, right? Uh, well, if if you go back to Psalm 149, um, uh, Psalm 149 uh, is a interesting passage um, um, where, that I think explains what Peter is, uh, is doing. Here it says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, and let his praise be in the congregation of the godly ones. Let Israel be glad in his maker, and let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king, let them praise his name with dancing, with uh, and sing uh, praises to him with the timbrel and the lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people, for he will beautif- uh, beautify the afflicted ones with salvation. Verse five: Let the godly ones exalt in glory, and let them sing for joy on their beds, and let the high praise of God be in their mouth, and the two-edged sword in their hand. Hmm to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment that is written. And then uh, this last uh, last verse, this is an honor for all of the godly ones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, um, you know, Peter, hey, hey, Lord, I got this one. You get the rest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's common. Yeah. That day is coming when the judgment is executed. Yeah. Well, uh, it's the, just not the this Psalm day. too. That's the it, Psalm it, it's too. Absolutely, yeah, the it absolutely is. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, but here, um, Peter needs to realize, and he's failed to realize, that uh, the Christ must first be delivered up into the hands mm-hmm. of wicked men and be crucified and killed and then raised. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... Uh, will come uh, will come the kingdom. So mm-hmm. uh, those who had uh, seized Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, that's the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. Notice this is all happening at night. They didn't want to do it in front of the people. Mm-hmm. But Peter was also following them at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest and entered in and sat down in the officers to see the outcome. And uh, the chief priests and the whole council kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order that they might find a reason to put him to death. Mm-hmm. A false prophet, if if they can get him to d- demonstrate he's a false prophet, they can put him to death. But they didn't find any. Right. Uh, even though many false witnesses came forward, um, but later on, two came forward and uh, said, this man stated, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said to him, do you make no answer? What is it that these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. Of course, this comes out of Isaiah 53. Mm-hmm. Um, I adjure you by the living God, tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Now, uh, this is a interesting question. I adjure you by the living God, tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. This is uh, the Christ, the Psalm 2. You just mentioned mm-hmm. Psalm 2, mm-hmm. Son of God. Mm-hmm. Um, are you the Psalm 2 Christ? And Jesus said, you've said it yourself, nevertheless. I love it when when people critics will say, "Well, Jesus never claimed to be God. Jesus never claimed to be this or that." I'm going, oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he mm-hmm. says, "Not only am I the Christ, not only am I the Son of God. I also," he says, "You've said it yourself. Nevertheless, I tell you, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man." That comes from Daniel chapter seven. Mm-hmm. Behold, I kept looking in the night visions, and one mm-hmm. like the Son of Man was it came up to the Ancient of Days, and power and authority and dominion was given to him to rule the nations. You see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, right hand of power. That's Psalm 110. Mm-hmm. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at your, uh, my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And coming on the clouds, that's back to Daniel chapter 7. All of that, he said, you think that it's just, you know, who do people say that the Son of Man is? You are the Christ. Uh, there's more. 
right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're the Psalm 110, the one who sits at the right hand of the Father who makes intercession for the, the sins. This is the suffering servant. This is, mm-hmm. All of it's coming together, mm-hmm. right? Then the high priest tore his robe and said, he has blasphemed. What need do we have of witnesses? Behold, uh, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they answered and said, he's deserving of death. Then they spit on his face and beat him with their fists, and others slapped him, beat him, uh, they, you know, beat him with rods, and mm-hmm. uh, they said, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who's the one who, who hits you? Um, there was a, a, one of our old professors, Dr. Pentecost. He'd always stop here, and he'd say, make no mistake. Those who struck him will pay. And the way he'd say that just kind of still mm-hmm. chills down your, down yeah. your back. You know? It's yeah. like, it's like in, it's like in uh, Lion King when the two, yeah. uh, what are they, the, oh, the, they're not jackals, what are they, the hyenas? Hyenas, yeah, yeah the two hyenas yeah. say, uh, Mufasa, Ooh, Ooh, say, it again. say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Make no mistake, yeah. uh, those who struck him yeah. will pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there's Peter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter was sitting outside the cur- courtyard. Shows and, up again, uh, and a certain Story. servant girl came and said, "You, you were with him. You were with Jesus the Galilee." Mm-hmm. And he said, I, "I was not. I don't know what you're talking about." And when he had gone out of the gate, another uh, saw him and said, uh, "This man was with Jesus of, of Nazareth, and he denied it again uh, with, with an, an oath." oath. Yeah. I do not know the man. Wow. A little later, bystanders came up and said to Peter, surely you're one of them, uh, for the way you talk gives you away. Mm-hmm. Then he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately the cock crowed. And Peter remembered the word what Jesus had said before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Peter gets a bad rap for this. Um, let me point out something that should be obvious. Mm-hmm. He was there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least he, At was, least there. he was there. Where yeah. were the others, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he lasted longer than the others, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, he uh, he didn't last either. And, of course, uh, all of this to fulfill the Scriptures. And, uh, and so um, uh, just point of application here. Um, we're all going to fail. If you think you're perfect, you're not. Mm-hmm. If you think you're not going to fail yourself or mm-hmm. the Lord, you, you, you are. Um, I like to say it this way. If you could do what only Jesus could do, you wouldn't need Jesus to do what do only Jesus could do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> it doesn't excuse failure. Yeah. Uh, but as we said before, the Lord's not shocked by our failure. Yeah, you, we, what we said earlier too, what I said earlier about, you know, we don't set out to do certain things at the beginning of the day. Uh, what 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 you see is is Peter, he, again, no surprises from Jesus' side, but as he gains understanding, as he grows in his understanding, as the Spirit's given to them and they're sent out, I think what you see is is also evident today in our faith. The more, you know, we come to faith and then gain understanding, as I grow in wisdom of the Word, mm-hmm. it, it puts out some guardrails for me. So sure. uh, I, I just think growing in that. So, you know, to keep it simple, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up mm-hmm. each day. But each day as I come back to God's Word and I'm in conversation with you and others, and I'm growing in this understanding that, sure. yes, I do need more mercy that grows, that understanding grows Absolutely. even more every day Absolutely, to every extent of my life. Yep. But uh, also, I grow in this understanding to help um, come back and go, ooh, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Let's pause here because that one's going to hurt. Yeah. And yeah. I can help others. Yeah, sure. You know, in that light. Sure. So. And Peter, um, even after Christ's death, burial, resurrection, receiving, uh, this is in Galatians uh, chapter sure. chapter yeah, 2. Paul, Paul. Paul's got to Paul correct Peter out. again. And yes. And you know, and there were times when we see Paul was uh, was wrong, probably with John mm-hmm. Mark, the whole John Mark situation. Where, yeah, yeah. You know, Paul's Barnabas. so you know, uh, none of these men were perfect, mm-hmm. 
uh, but they were being used by the Lord in their imperfection, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that Peter gets a bad rap probably from from most um, Protestants just because we don't like, you know, the Roman Catholics claiming Peter is, you know, the first mm-hmm. pope or something like that. But yeah. but the church was built on Peter yeah, uh, and on Peter's uh, testimony, on his proclamation. Mm-hmm. And, and he's the one who preaches the, the gospel on the Acts chapter 2 of the day of Pentecost. And he's the one that takes the gospel to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, he, Peter is central. Right. Uh, to this uh, this whole thing, and uh, and if Peter can blow it and still be used by the Lord, then just maybe you can be used by the Lord too after mm-hmm. you blow it. Yeah, right? yeah, and you will blow it. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash! <Yeah. laughs> Peter's great encouragement. Yeah. I, I love yeah. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he's a great encouragement. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so so yeah. So chapter twenty six uh, mm-hmm. here. Chapter twenty six. We're we're got to Christ's uh, arrest. Uh, and Peter's uh, Peter's denial, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's probably a good place to uh, to stop for this time. And next mm-hmm. time we'll pick it up in chapter twenty seven, and we'll get into Christ's trial and and uh, crucifixion. Sounds great. Thank you, David, and thank you to everyone who uh, joined with us today. And uh, continue continue going back and just reading without the numbers, without the verses, chapters, so that we can keep staying in, in, in context with the story. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's Word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.